if you'll turn with me today, we're going to get right into the word testing positive in our choices. Joshua 24, verse 15. Joshua 24, verse 15. Most of you don't even have to turn to that because you know this scripture. This is a very popular scripture. It's a very uh, well understood scripture. But I want to elaborate and break it down for you a little bit if we can. If Let's pray. Lord, today, show us things we've never seen. Let us hear things we've never heard. And let us do things that we've never done. In Jesus' name, amen. You have a choice. The choice is up to you. The Bible says this, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Later on it says this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mothers and fathers who are the leaders of your household, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As the priest of my home, I have made that choice. God could require it. He could mandate it. He's God. He could say, I created you and you will serve me. But he wants us to make the choice to serve him. And when I make that choice for my family of four, that's our choice. In this house, we will serve the Lord. We won't be perfect. We will make mistakes. We will probably have some mulligans, things we would like to do over and get a second chance on. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to read the word. We're going to go to church. We're going to pray. We're going to bless the food at dinner time. Amen. Unashamedly. We're going to uh, pray in, in tongues and, and be Bible based and spirit filled and all that. Unashamedly. Loving Jesus as our savior. Doesn't mean we won't mess up. Doesn't mean we won't make a poor choice from time to time. So today we're going to talk about how to overcome that and get drawn back into the fold. It's your choice. It's up to you. If you choose this day whom you will serve and as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord, then you've already made the right choice. See, that's the foundation. That's the basis. That's the filter that every other choice will go through. If you serve the Lord, then all of your choices and decisions should go through that filter of what would be pleasing unto God. You've made the right choice. Who we live for decides how we live and what we will fall for. Who we live for decides how we will live and what we will fall for. See, I believe this day when you choose, you choose to make a start. You take the first step. There is an action that is required of us for God to do his part. We have our part. God has his part. You don't do your part. God will withhold the blessing of his part. There is an action that is required on our part in order for God to bless our part becoming his part. Our part is minimal. His part is monumental. It is exponential. We do a little bit. Remember that? Little is much when God is in it. Remember that? Our little becomes much when God is in it, right? So think of it from that perspective. In 2021, I ask you this question. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to start? What steps are you willing to take to have something that you've never done or achieved in the past? What are you willing to do? Many of you just came off the 21-day fast, right? Fasting and prayer. Anybody fast in prayer? Okay. I want you to know there were three people that raised their hand. You got three people that fasted and prayed. Fasting and prayer. We just came off that, Right? Many of you just came off the fasting and prayer and, and Pastor Matt was talking about stories and different things like that. Our story is that when we came off that thing, the first thing we did is pull into that where, where that little red light is that says hot now. Krispy Kreme, praise God for Krispy Kreme. I got any other fans of Krispy Kreme? No, the Lord showed us things during our time of fasting and prayer at the first of the year that set the tone for the rest of the year. So as we enter March 1st, the third month, the last month of the first quarter, the 10th month, 11th month, or 10th month of the year, I want you to ask yourselves, what can I start tomorrow, March 1st, that I've never done before, that I've never achieved before? What steps, what sacrifices, what commitments am I willing to make to set the tone for the rest of the year? See, here's what we can do. This is, this is, these are the three steps that I would tell you that you can make a difference in achievement in life. Number one, you start where you are. You start here, you can go anywhere. Start where you are. Number two, you use what you have. 
You know, I hear people all the time, well, if I had what he had, or if I got the breaks he had, or if I knew who he knew, then I could achieve those things too. Hey, start where you are. Use what you've got. Maximize your potential. And then do all that you can do with the potential that God has given you. And then God will bless you. I believe that. I believe that's what Jesus did. See, I'm, I'm pic, I'm picture, I have a picture of mine, a visual memory. So when I read Bible stories and read scripture all my life, I have to play it out like a movie script. I have to see it. I have to, I have to visualize it. So I was thinking about, you know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, I was thinking about it from this perspective. Could you imagine sitting there and there are 5,000 men plus women and children, right? And I just picture the 12 disciples just totally in panic. Jesus, what are we going to do? Jesus, there are 5,000 people. Jesus, what are we going to do? And I, I think he just sat back. I think he said, boys, we're going to start where we are. We're right here. They're right there. There's 5,000. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use what we've got. What do y'all got? What do y'all got? Jesus, we got five loaves and two fish. There's 5,000 people. What are we going to do? What are we going to You got five loaves and two fish. Okay. And we're going to do what we can do. We're just going to do all we can do with, with what we've got. We've got five loaves and two fish. So give me, the, give me the bread. Give me the fish. Now go feed the people. He started where he was, used what he had, and he did what only he could do. So the 5,000 were fed. And so today, if I asked you what five plus two equals, you would say, ah, some of y'all were here first service. Five plus two mathematically supposedly equals seven, but in Jesus' economy... It equals 5,000 with a remainder of 12. See, they collected 12 baskets of leftovers, right? And my wife one day, she said, you think those 12 baskets were designed so that each of the disciples would have a take-home box? <laughs> so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. They didn't have microwaves back then, but you know what? I like leftovers. I'm sure the disciples said, hey, this is pretty cool. I'll take the leftovers home. 12 take-home boxes. That's, that's God's economy. That's how things work when you commit your life to Christ. That's, how, that's what he can do that only he can do. See, you guys that are in the business world, you're always talking about your ROI, your return on investment, right? See, in God's economy, five plus two equals 5,000 with a remainder of 12. If you do the math, that's better than stocking GameStop. That's better than anything you can purchase in stocks on Robinhood, the app. It's a better return on investment than you can get anywhere. God's economy is different than our economy because he can do what he can only do. So today I challenge you to make a fresh new start. I challenge you to choose to do something you've never done before. Tackle something. Write out a bucket list. Do something that if God will do this, then I promise, Lord, I'm going to commit to you that I'm going to take an extra step and do something that I've never done before. I want to say it this way. Where did all this start? Start here, go anywhere. Where did it all start? It all started in the book of Genesis. It all started in this word. This is the word of God. Does everybody believe that? This is the infallible, inspired word of God. The Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you do not believe that, I cannot help you. We need to stop right there. Because in my Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And I am the least political guy you will ever meet. But let me just say it this way. I have a bachelor's of science. I have a master's degree in science. I follow the science. I've had the virus. Last week, we buried my uncle because of the virus. But I believe this word over any science, over any scientist, over any man or woman who tells me what to do with my life. I believe this word. And here's what I will say about this world, word. The Bible says to be in the world, but not of it, right? Let me tell you what separates the word from the world. The word from the world is separated by one letter. That letter just happens to be L. And the way I look at it as an old basketball coach, I don't want to take that L. That L represents a loss. See, this, this is the W, the word. The world has that letter L, which means that it takes the loss. Be in it, not of it. Believe this, not that. Get your news from here. Whose report are you going to believe? This. Ignore all that other noise. 
That's man saying what they want to say. Believe what God is saying in the word of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I believe the word, not the world. So Adam and Eve in Genesis had it all. They had everything that you could ever imagine. They had perfection. There was no sickness. There was no surgery. There was no pain. There was no grief. There was no loss. Didn't even know what nakedness was. And on top of that, God Almighty, the creator of all, would come and meet with them, walk with them, and talk with them in the garden every evening. What more could anyone ask for? But they didn't want just that. They wanted more. See, the way I look at it is if this was a Walmart or a Costco or a Sam's, God said, hey, you can have everything you want, everything in the food aisle, every, every sweet, every steak, every shrimp. You can have all the clothes. You can have all the shoes. You can have all the grills. You can have all the fishing rods. You can have all the toys and bikes, anything you want. But there's a broom closet back there in the back. And in that broom closet, there's, there's a little old basket of apples. Just take all this right here and I'll come see you every night. We'll walk and talk and have a great time, but just don't go in that closet back there. Don't mess with that little basket back there. You don't need it. Just stay away from it. And it wasn't enough. It was not enough. Eve said, I think I would like to have one of those apples. And Adam, you're going to eat too. We're going to go back here and eat one of those apples. I know God said that's forbidden fruit, but, but we're going to do it anyway. You know why? Because she listened to the serpent. She listened to the serpent, which means if you listen to the wrong voices, you will make the wrong choices. They listened to the wrong voices and made the wrong choices. You know what the byproduct of that decision and that one choice was? Every descendant of Adam and Eve has to suffer the consequences of their choices. See, every time we make a choice, it not only impacts us, but it impacts everyone around us. Most importantly, those that we love the most. We still suffer the consequences of the backroom broom closet apple. When I believe they were created in perfection, I gotta believe that Adam was a stud, just chiseled. And, and I gotta believe that Eve was just beautiful, the most beautiful woman. And I gotta believe that the, the streams were perfect no pollution and the leaves, there were no brown leaves, no brown blades of grass. Everything was perfectly green. God gave them all that and they made a choice anyway. And today, here's what I believe about where we live. God has given us exceedingly abundantly. You know, oh, Richie, you're one of those glass half full guys. No, I do not believe the glass is half full. I believe the glass is full and running over. I choose a life of abundance in Jesus Christ. Amen. I certainly don't believe it's half empty, but I believe it's full and running over because I believe God has blessed us and I believe he wants to bless us. And I believe there are things in our lives that if we would just receive it and believe it, that God would bless us, right? That's the God I serve. So it's a simple mathematical equation. We believe and we receive all that God has for us. But they made the wrong voice. They listened to the wrong voice. Therefore, they made the wrong choice. Let's look at this process of choices because in studying, preparing for my book, I discovered an Austrian psychologist named Alfred Adler. And here's how Adler depicts the process of a choice because we're visual people, especially men. Men, we are visual. We, we are very visual. We know when we like something that we see. So here's what happens. We see something that we like and that promotes a thought so vision, we see it, we think it, then there's a feeling that it provides. I think I like that. I, that would feel good if I had that. And because of that, we take action. Now don't, don't, miss, don't disregard what I'm saying. It can be positive or negative. What we see in vision, if I walk into Dick's Sporting Goods and I see that new Callaway driver, I think I would like it. Then I pick it up and I put my hands on that grip and I'm like, man, that feels good. I think I will buy that. It can be the other way too. We see the tempter. We see something that we shouldn't do. That would feel good. Then I'm gonna take action and do the wrong thing. So the thought becomes a feeling 
which turns into an action. It's a psychological process that takes place. So when we find the positive, when we test positive, we need to pursue the positive. When we go down that negative route and we have that thought, we need to squelch it right there. Nip it in the bud. Stop it while it's a thought. Become, well, once it becomes a feeling, then you're probably going to pursue it. So you got to be super careful in that thought process. Squelch the negativity. Pursue the positivity. Choices made equal consequences paid. Every choice has one of two reactions. Negative choice, you suffer the consequences. Well, Jesus says, I'll forgive you 70 times 7. Yes, that does not preclude us from suffering the consequences while still here on earth. So every choice promotes one of two. The other is a reward gain. Choices made equals a reward gain. You make the positive choice, you receive the reward. Just like Adam and Eve, our choices impact everyone around us, especially those that we love the most. You think about it from this perspective. I grew up in a very conservative town uh, where the denomination that this church belongs to is, and, and it, it was old school. I'll be honest with you. There were a lot of don'ts. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't, hey, what, what do we believe at my church? Well, you can't do this, can't do that. You cannot drink. You cannot cuss. You cannot spit. You cannot chew. You cannot smoke. Don't have premarital sex because that might lead to dancing. <laughs> what do we really believe, though? I believe Jesus was the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. I believe he's a good God. I believe he wants to bless us. I believe he's the greatest. There is no one that can compare the process of choice, if I choose whom I will serve and that's who I serve, I'm going to make good choices. Therefore, I'm going to receive rewards. So when we think about it from a legacy standpoint, when we talk about Adam and Eve, they're remembered for the fall of man. That's what their legacy is. That's what they passed on. That's what we're talking about today, thousands of years later, when we refer to Adam and Eve. But what about Abraham? Let's turn this thing around a little bit. What about Abraham? Abraham. Abraham was known as the friend of the friend of God. What a legacy. What a, what a description. That's what I want to be known as, friend of God. I want to be known, if you ask me, I want to be known as a giver. I want to be known as somebody who gave of their time and their resources to help people. Giver of my worship to the one that I love and want to serve. Abraham was a friend of God. See, in Genesis 21, it tells us that God blessed all that Abraham did. You know what that word all means? It means all. God blessed all that Abraham did. Genesis 24 says this, God blessed Abraham in every aspect of life. You know what every means? Every. I claim today, I've started praying as I've gotten older, God, I don't wanna miss opportunities. Help me in every aspect of life. Let me take advantage of every opportunity that you present me with. Let me impact every person that I run across. Let me do all that you have called me to do. Don't let me swing and miss. Let me knock it out of the park, God. I want all that you have for me in every aspect of life, just like you did for Abraham. If he's truly no respecter of persons, he can bless you the same way he did Abraham. Amen? How many receive that today? Hebrews 6 says this, as Abraham waited patiently, he received all the good promises of God. See, it says he waited patiently. And how many of you know that God answers every prayer you'll ever pray? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes he says, just wait a while. Don't disdain the waiting season. The waiting season is not a wasted season. The waiting season is a development process. If you're single in the house today, you're being developed. God would tell you today, start being the right one. Stop looking for the right one. If you will be the right one, I will send you the right one. I was 29, single, living in Atlanta, Georgia. Didn't have a girlfriend, didn't have a date. Pursuing my career path, thinking this is what I want to do in life. And she walked into my life at 29 years old. She walked into my life. God's given us 26 years of wonderful marriage. I count all 26. She says 19 of them were good. 
Don't disdain the waiting season. It's not a wasted season. What are you believing for? That promotion at work, that business you want to launch. When you get ready and you commit yourself to God, he will bless you with that that you're looking for, that ROI, that return on investment. Be faithful during the waiting season because it's not a wasted season. But the Abrahamic blessing, how many of you have heard this before growing up? How many of you as parents may say it? Hey, where are you going tonight? Well, I'm going out with uh, Stephanie and Elizabeth and Pastor Robert and Sister Gail. Okay, that's okay. But if I say, hey, uh, I'm going over here with Steve and Tom and, you know, Jack and, and you know, uh, Spud and, you know, and I start throwing out nicknames and my parents say, be careful. Don't be guilty by association, right? You've told your kids that. Parents have a sick discernment of what can get their kids in and out of trouble, right? Grandparents know it. You heard it as a child. You tell it as a parent. You tell it as a grandparent. But here's what I would say to you. You can be guilty by association or you can be blessed by association. If I go with them, I am blessed by my association. See, the Bible says that God told Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. In 2021, what that means is that God says, you do what's right. You go hang with the right people. You put the right people in your life and I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless them because of you. You are blessed so that you can be a blessing. But the Bible also says, I will curse those who bless you, who, who curse you. You know what that means to me? That means he's got my back. That means I don't have to defend myself. That means I can turn the other cheek. That means I don't have to go on Facebook and say, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> Jesus made the lame to walk. Facebook made the dumb to talk. Let me just say this right here, if I can. If you want to test positive, I want you to repeat this after me. I, I, I want to do this. I think this is important. Look at the person next to you. If you're sitting by yourself, talk to your hand. <laughs> I choose not to gossip about you and your family, about my church and my pastor. This last part's really, really, really important, so get it right, okay? I choose only to speak positive, to build up and even brag on today's guest speaker. Abraham tested positive. See, the Bible says that Abraham believed, therefore he was called the son of God. What was Abraham's part? To believe, have faith, to trust, to, to know that you're not gonna always understand everything. The last chapter in my book says, how do I trust when I don't understand? See, there are things on this earth that we will never understand, but it's not our job to understand, it's our job to trust. The Bible says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. My thoughts are higher than yours. That means I know your past, I know your present, but I know your future and you don't. So you need to trust in me. You need to understand that sometimes you're not going to understand what I'm up to, but I'm God and I'm omniscient and I'm sovereign and you need to put your trust in me. Put your plans in my hands and I will bless and prosper you. Make a commitment today, February 28th, that March 1st, you will start here and truly go anywhere. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My daughter's 21 and she's a college student and she tells us a couple weeks ago, you know, dad, I... I I don't know what to think. I, I, I see everybody's mad at each other and there's all this dissension and there's all this going on and social media is just a nightmare. And she said, if I, if I get married, what, what do I do? Do I, do I bring a child into this earth? I said, absolutely. 
absolute that you bring a child in this earth because Isaiah 59 says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. Psalm 121 says the strength comes from the Lord and he will guard every area of our lives. And then it says this, and he always will. See, Abraham's descendants are blessed and will continue to be blessed. And the Bible says that God told Abraham, I'm going to give all of your descendants all of this land. What does all mean? All. As an inheritance for a life well lived by you, Abraham. That's what I want. That's my legacy. I want to leave an inheritance for my children. I have money taken out of my paycheck to put in a retirement account that one day I hope to not spend, but to pass on to them. I want to leave them an inheritance. I want to leave them a legacy. I want them to look back and say, my dad loved Jesus. My dad loved my mom. I'm going to model my marriage after the way they treat each other. I'm going to work hard to earn a good living, but I'm going to be in church on Sundays. And I'm going to be in a Bible plan in you version or in a hard copy Bible. That's the legacy that I want to leave. Amen. As you stand with me, I want to close. See, I told you that your choice is made equal consequences paid or your choice is made equal a reward that's gained. And we talk about 70 times seven a lot. Your choices impact those that you love the most. And I'm the oldest of three children. How old am I? None of your business. But my brother and my sister predeceased me. My sister passed in 1998, my brother in 2002. And right now, I don't want you to feel sorry for me because every one of you have suffered grief. Every one of you have suffered loss, right? Every one of you have your own story. I'm just telling you mine. 98, sister dies. 2002, brother dies. My brother, at 18, graduated high school, headed to the Big Apple. He was going to make it. Singer, dancer, really, really good looking, really, really talented. Another one of those and I'm still getting over, the jealousy aspect, like Scott Shepard. But he made some really horrific choices. He got involved in a lifestyle that proved to be very destructive. It was disappointing and devastating to us. His choices affected us, but it was destructive to him. It cost him his life. Contacted a virus called AIDS back then. And, um, you know, he had to suffer the consequences while on earth. But this is really a victory lap. And in my book, if you want to read more about it, we talk about how the fact that he made so many poor choices. He listened to the wrong voices. He was guilty by association over and over and over again. But God gave him a second and a fifth and a tenth and a hundredth and a two hundredth chance to make another choice. And with one choice to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, to accept grace and mercy, that one choice canceled a lifetime of poor choices. Today, you have that same opportunity. It's no accident that you're here today. It required effort on your part to get here today. You made a choice to be here today. You got out of bed. You got in a car. You put on some clothes and you got here today. And God wants to reward that effort that you made today. God wants to reward a lifestyle pleasing unto him. God wants to tell you that March 1st, tomorrow, you can make a brand new start. The last 10 months of the year can be the best 10 months of any year you've ever had before. And God wants to tell you today that if you'll make that one choice and you may say, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay. You may say, well, I used to live for Jesus and I, I'm trying, but you know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm. Or you may say, man, I'm totally lost. Thank God I got here today. Some of you are saying, I'm here most of the time. I read my Bible and you know, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay. Are you satisfied with okay? Is that enough? See, I want that, that cup running over. I want a life that's abundant. I want all that God's got for him. I want him to bless every aspect of my life. How about you? So as you bow today, no, nobody looking around, just close your eyes. I'm gonna do this in three different parts. 
If you say today, Richie, I'm, I'm, I'm that person, I'm that guy, that gal, I need Jesus in a bigger way in my life. I, I either don't know him or I did know him and I'm not living the way I should, but today I wanna make it right. I wanna start here today and go anywhere. All eyes are closed. If that's you, raise your hand. Just let me see who that is. Praise the Lord. Good Lord. Thank you. Hands down. Next category is God. Uh, Richie, I'm believing for something and I haven't gotten that answer yet. I'm kind of in that waiting period that you spoke of, but I've got faith to believe and receive and I'm not going to give up. If that's you, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Hands down. The last thing I would say to you is, Richie, I heard you talk about legacy today. I don't want to be Adam and Eve. I don't want to impact others with consequences. I want them to receive rewards. I want those who are around me to be blessed because I'm a blessing to them. I want to be Abraham, Richie. If that's you today, raise your hand. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I submit my life to you. I place my plans in your hands. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you to bless me and bless everyone that I'm associated with. I claim your promises. I believe and receive. I love you, Jesus. I will follow you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. Amen and amen. Stretch your hand this way. I never close a service without giving you what I call my 5P blessing. 5P words that can change your life. I pray them over my children. Pray them over my wife every day. I repeat them everywhere I go. It's on my website, richiehughes.org. Today I bid you peace, protection, prosperity, promotion, and productivity in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.